Hey, Kitty Girls, it's Sunday, March 26th, 2023, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time Season 15, our episode 4, where we will be discussing episodes 11, 12, and 13 of the current season, also known as Two Queens, One Joke, Wig Loose, The Rusical, and Teacher Makeovers. And for those of you that are new here, hi, welcome to the show. My name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. And uh, we're going to discuss our thoughts on the most recent episodes in this current ongoing season that... Um, it's still going? Uh, well, I, <sighs> luckily, this is virtual, and you can't reach through uh, Skype to slap me in the face. <laughs> it feels like it's gone fast. Like, that's the feeling I've had for two episodes is I'm like, oh, my God, like, we're wrapping up. Oh, my God, like, the finale is about to happen. It does feel that way a little bit. I wouldn't slap you for that. Um, (laughs) I thought you were going to be like, bitch, it's been going on forever. Like, of course, (laughs) we we are where we are. I get what you mean. But, you know, because realizing we had, like, 16 queens to start this season. Mm. But here we are now. At this point, we've made it to four. Are we at five? We're four. at four. Yeah, we're at four. Yeah. And there has been no yeah. returning queen and right. no double Shantae. Right. So there's been nothing coming back or nothing. No one coming back. There's been no, um, like, bring all the queens back and some kind of shenanigan with that. It, is, it has been straightforward, boom, 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 boom. Queen gone, queen gone, queen gone. Almost like they've been listening to what the public wants. Hmm. Except for that 60-minute shenanigan stuff because of the turds (laughs) of WeHo. Anyways. um... (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, there's that. So, anyways, uh, why don't we dive in to our first segment? Racers, start your engines, and may the best drag queen win. Yes, yes, yes. That's what this whole thing is about, right, children? It's about the best drag queen winning. And for a little while this season, it looked like that might not be happening, but... I think production's catching up. So in this section, David and I are going to discuss three kind of um, areas across these episodes, what stood out to us. So we've got these things called serves, which are the positives, the things that we very much appreciated, thought were on point. We've got our swerves because, baby, there is a road hazard. you got to go around it. This is something that is not a good thing at all. And then we've got nerves. And nerves could be really good or really not good. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Why don't we start with serves, David? Who, who, what, where, when have you got serves for? So I have a couple of things, and this is just, I'm going to give a serve to, um, this situation, the timely conversation regarding drag versus hate, which happened during the Wigloose episode and the next episode, they're bringing in teachers and having these like wonderful, like discussions about queer identities and being teachers and and fostering that um, environment where they are safe and protected. I really did enjoy these like moments in this episode. And this is kind of why I'm giving this the highest serve for me Mm -hmm. because it feels weird because you have to realize they filmed this about a year ago. So Right. That has been the the scuttlebutt on social media uh, and not negatively, but like the, did it was impossible for production to have a crystal ball right. and to look into 2023 last year in 2022 when they filmed like a year ago and be able to know that this shit was going to be as significant as it is. Right. Cause it, it and, and it feels so odd to me, mostly because, um, mostly because again, it didn't, it, Obviously, it, it's a timely conversation, and things like this have been happening, but the fact that it kind of is literally happening right now, mm-hmm. and they had no way of really knowing that all this legislation and all of this other shit was going on and going down in 
certain states, probably where some of these queens are, are maybe from. Mm -hmm. um, pretty sure they're queens from Texas, but um, mistress. Anyway, yeah, mistress in particular. Yeah, so it's so wonderful. And then you brought these teachers in, and I don't know where all of them were from. They, I think, they keep that kind of ambiguous um, for the sake of the teachers. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and uh, you know, they brought these 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 wonderful ladies in to do these makeovers and they were able to talk about their own identities and their own uh, experiences with queer the one um i think mrs reyes um who was mentioning that she has a queer family like she has queer children that she you know is is you know raising so it was just this very wonderful sentiment and i appreciated that the production and the you know whoever decided to take this moment and do that for them so, mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah no i mean I, I i it's been a little bit since we've had a makeover and mm -hmm. more importantly a makeover that had a lot of heart mm -hmm. so i think about like when they did the veterans um right. when they did older gays um, mm -hmm. There are a couple of makeovers that have really stood out. Uh, nothing against like redoing family members. Um, but, you know, it's like the, this one really kind of like, again, the timing of it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it just, just feels, it feels so, again, like you said, like they don't have a crystal ball, but it feels so like someone foresaw. Mm -hmm. this going down the lines and were able to create these moments that you know, you weren't, you're never 100% sure it was going to happen. Um, well, you can dabble a little bit. You have, you know, picking the teachers and all of that stuff. It's really easy to like, okay, well, yada, yada is, is, has a queer family. We'll put her in here and all that. But that's me going meta and <laughs> mm -hmm. like really, really overthinking it on the half of production. So, right. No, that's fair. That's fair. What about you? Um, well, I want to definitely give a serve uh, to two things. One of them was production's decision, which, I mean, it was bound to happen, I guess, technically, at this stage. Um, spoiler alerts for those of you who aren't caught up on the most recent seasons, or, uh, sorry, recent, recent episodes. Um, so, production's reveal of Mistress's drag mother. Mm-hmm. Um, I had not heard of Mistress's drag mother, but learned this is a big freaking deal mm. and and it feels like <laughs> to borrow a phrase mistress was sitting on a secret and wasn't really talking a whole lot about it or production made the decision to not reveal that until the untucked episode where they showed them mm -hmm. talking to mistress like in their video from home segment um because sasha knew who mistress's mother is. And I kind of got the impression that Sasha didn't know that she knew mm. mistress's drag mother. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it's a big deal. And I apologize. I didn't write the name down, but it just really made an impression on me about how, what we learn a little bit is that this person, this character, this representation comes from a place. And that person like, is is someone who is known and so unlike carrie colby when she was in and everybody was like oh sasha colby you know like everyone was kind of fawing over who uh sasha colby is without having seen sasha colby yet right until this season and so i just really appreciated the way they kind of did that because they don't really have to do that and they don't do that with many other people like they don't really talk about their drag family their drag house, their drag mothers, their mm -hmm. drag fathers. And so I was really kind of intrigued that they did that. And I thought it was nice um, yeah. and that it was a, you know, a, a move that they decided to do. And the reason why I kind of said, you know, like it was bound to happen is like everyone now who's in the cast at this remaining point has had a video from home. Um, so even though you and, uh, Damon and we had <laughs> had this little conversation. I think the patrons heard it, or maybe it wasn't even recorded, where we kind of speculated. I threw out there very wildly that the reason why Lux got her video when she did was because she was about to go home, uh, <laughs> which was not true. So, for those wondering, <laughs> um, Mistress's drag mother is Chevelle Brooks. 
they unfortunately wrote it down and remembered that he wrote it down and <laughs> went to try to type it in to make sure I was spelling it right. Nice. And I'm trying to look at, um, so, so just, this is from the, um, RuPaul's Drag Race wiki. Mm-hmm. Um, mistress is the drag daughter of Chevelle Brooks and her drag grandmother is Calexis Davenport. This makes Jiggly Caliente, her drag sister, and a Curiousy Davenport, Honey Davenport, and Raja O'Hara, her drag cousin. Well, already then. Look at all that trivia. <laughs> look at look at how big that drag family is. Right. Interesting. Right. Very interesting. And they haven't brought that up yet. I wonder if that'll come up in Reunited. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it seems really clear that, you know, as... You know, Mistress Rule, Mistress has talked a lot about this, that her drag family means a lot to her. And mm-hmm. her drag family is kind of the family that saved her. Um, and um, it was fun to have that moment because I remember it. And that's why I wrote it. I wrote a little hard on it. Um, because, again, we don't, don't know how connected. And we also now don't know how just connected these queens all are. Um that little tidbit of trivia that I was reading and was a little surprised by. That's why I repeated it. Because I was like, wow, that is fun and right. interesting. I'm sure somebody out there somewhere. <laughs> sorry, I have the song stuck in my head now. Um, that they've they've already started doing the, you know, the dot uh, dot to dot diagram. Like... <laughs> Everybody's interconnected in the, in the RuPaul's Drag Race like universe. All the queens, the big drag family trees that are just like right interconnected and like it yes. almost looks like one of those um, conspiracy theories. Like yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I also want to give a serve to uh, Sasha's glove runway. Talk about thinking outside the box, and yet nailing it like the moment she turned the corner i was like of course sasha right you know clean sweep no notes tens across the board like just turns the corner and i was like i couldn't imagine being between those sugar walls in the pink you know work room and seeing her pull that number out and being one of the other queens and being like well fuck my drag Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like no. she consistently does that. And I'm like, oh, this is Sasha Colby's that? race. That's all it is. Like, I love it. Imagine like looking at this. Um, like you said, her pulling this out, putting it on and, you know, all the stuff on and just like looking over and being like. I've got these big ass hands. Like, but at least. I agree. Did you watch um, Fashion Photo Review? I with... did, yeah. I appreciate that Raja and Raven were both like, yes, this is it, mama. Like, Selena, mm-hmm. this is drag. This is exactly how you do it. And right. on top of it, had gloves upon gloves. Like, later uh-huh. revealed during the lip sync that she had other matching red gloves on underneath the inflatable red glove. Like, like I just thought that was, like... I wanted to yeah. give props for that. I thought it was great that, and I was in agreement with them. I was like, "That is drag." Yeah. Some I, of the I other stuff, not so much. Well, it's drag. I don't, it's just different. <laughs> I don't hate. I like. I I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but when you think about it in context and what the actual runway is, the category was uh, everybody say glove, mm-hmm. and like it just made sense. Maybe it bordered on too much, which we've learned is kind of Selena's aesthetic. And sometimes she goes a little right too much, but I appreciated it. And like like Raja and, and Raven kind of mentioned, like I do appreciate what she did because it did make sense to me. Now I will say this, since we're on this subject, and this will lead into the next thing. Uh, for this particular runway, I did not agree with Raja and Raven in their being okay with what Lux did. I am on the Willem side of things because in their podcast, Willem flat out said clearly, emphatically, those are not gloves. Arm casts are not gloves. End of story. And I was like, and she gets away with it. Same. Like, it's okay for her to like wear them. And I was like, are you kidding me? Just because cast like arm casts are original or unique and no one has ever done that. 
on the U.S. based franchise like main stage before, mm-hmm. does it mean you get a pass? Yeah. Sorry. Like I said, like <laughs> I mentioned in our our chat, I said it was it was funny that she was talking about generic while wearing an ensemble she got from Hot Topic, and a wig <clears> she got from <throat> she saw on a puppet. Like that's why I because that's how I feel. I don't. The ensemble, first of all, and then the, the fact that the cast were not gloves. Right. Like she had separate like glo- little glovelets on her hands to match the cast because the cast were just sleeves, literally, like from yeah. the from the shoulder down to the wrist. Yeah. Cast or sleeves. Yeah. And it's. I, you know, you can't really call it fingerless gloves like there's a part of me that's like oh well it's a thing no it's not no no it, yeah. it, it's, it's no. not the same it's no not. sorry so that being said uh let's talk about swerves well <laughs> <isn't that luck>? <laughs> <laughs> oh. just all up in the shit. so my swerve um is quite simply shut up Lux, mm. just I have. There are certain things that she has said throughout this contest competition that I've been like, girl, like, oh, Lord. And the 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 thing she said that caused me to put this down. Mm-hmm. Whoops, it is not on my. Whoop, it's on this page. I keep forgetting. She says in the, or she said it in the thing, like, oh, yeah. Like, her, for the first time in Drag Race history, she was in the bot. I wish I had a sound clip for Drag Delusion. Because that is the the theme of season 15. (laughs) And there is only, like, one queen who has kind of risen above all of it. Uh And I won't say who that is, because we all know. And she better fucking win. Um, And like, but like, you know, it's like, this has been the thing that's been going on is like, you know, as much as, you know, they production painted Lucy as being like in her own head about things. Lux is the front runner winner, baby. She is just living this Valentina esque slightly more grounded fantasy. Right. And, and that's sort of where, my problem falls is that I just don't, I, I don't understand. I get her confidence. I get that that's a thing, but there's more to it. And Mm -hmm. I feel that she just doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. She doesn't get that. What she says sometimes can be misconstrued. She doesn't understand that just because you said it doesn't mean the other person interprets it the same way as you did. Um, and that's what's very prevalent in this most recent Untucked. There was her moment with um, Lucy where she had mentioned her whole, like which, her dissertation from the last episode, <clears throat> um, where she's kind of like giving that you called her, you know, um, drag generic. And Lucy informs her that it felt like she wasn't unique and she wasn't, she said two words, but I can't remember. I know unique was one of them. Um, and I was kind of like, and see, like, and Lynn Luck said, I don't, I don't agree with, I don't think that's what I, that's what I meant. And I'm like, well, no, it doesn't matter what you meant or how you, what you said, it is how the person interpreted what you said. The person you are essentially, I don't want to say insulting, but giving this critique about, you are giving this critique that her drag is generic by using that word. You are calling, you are not, even in my general, basic, generic interpretation, that to me means she is not unique because a generic drug is just a, you know, you know, that's kind of the thought of process I have about it. Well, and, and what I thought was damnifying was how production just put in exactly what she said. Mm-hmm. And she's like, that's not what I said. And then I'm like, oh, but you did. Mm-hmm. Like, but I was like, if if we think that production has a thing for Lux, that was a redeeming moment where production was like, oh, no, 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 baby. You did say that. Yeah. So, and like, yeah. 
You might have meant it a different way. It doesn't matter how you meant it. You actually said the words like you basically kind of put the insult out there. And and yeah. I agree with you because I think there's this interesting thing that Lux is presenting that I think is happening in American culture where people are like, well, your being offended is not my problem. Like your 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 feelings, your interpretation are not my issue because it's how I said something. And that's just mm -hmm. the fact. Right. It's like there's this weird disconnect uh -huh. that what you say has an impact on other things. And I agree. Like, that's sort of the situation I feel. And that's why I want her realistically, really, to shut up. I just need you to shut up, to set, shut up, to shut the fuck up, to stop talking. Because I just, your mouth is what gets you in trouble sometimes. Oh, for sure. Like, and, and what she doesn't realize is I think she's disrespectful. Right. And if we were to try to have this conversation with her, she's like, oh, no, no, it's nothing about respect. And I'd be like, oh, but it is. You just cannot see that or understand that in this moment. Mm -hmm. Right. And so right. now you're being defensive. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize, like, you don't need to be defensive. You don't need to say yeah. anything. You could actually be quiet. You could just take it in mm -hmm. and process it and think about it. And move on. Like, right, big, like, again, there was that moment in the, like, we'll go back several episodes to the whole um, Malaysia and the, the we're taking, um, what was it? Hip, whatever. Country, whatever, the, the old, whatever the, oh, oh, rock or whatever. Metal, that's what mm -hmm. it is. And she basically kept on saying, it's ours, it's ours, it's ours, it's ours. It's not sure. She didn't give any reason why. She didn't say any reason why it should be. She just said that it was ours. And because she said it, that meant that it was that was it. Right. She didn't understand in any way, shape, or form that that was bullying. Right. She's like, it's not bullying. And I'm like, but it is. But it is. Because that's like, but, but that's like me taking your ice cream away and you saying, but that's my ice cream. And me saying, no, it's not. Now it's mine. No, it's not. It's mine. No, it's not. It's mine. No, it's not. It's mine. Like, you're ignoring the fact that, like, I, in that example, I'm disregarding the fact that I took it away from you. And that is the act of bullying. Like, stating something a gazillion times over and over again and repeating yourself doesn't make it fact. Mm -hmm. It just right. means you're repeating yourself. Mm -hmm. So there's that. So there's that. So, <laughs> Gary? Um, yeah, so uh, a couple of swerves. The Shredded Runway. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucy <laughs> versus Selena versus Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Like, I, 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 I feel – I don't want to give them an out, but I feel like the prompt led them astray or something. Because it seems like, although this has been accused in the past, that sometimes some of the queens get different prompts than others. And it, mm. it intentionally kind of sabotages them for when they show up. Which, if that's true, that's like the biggest, like, wiggery and shenanigans, like, in existence. To tell a queen, you know, well, this is the thing. And then you find out other queens were given a different prompt for the same thing. And you're like, right. wait, which is it? <sighs> So, uh, yeah, there's, there's that. And then also the swerve, um, I'm trying to remember why I wrote this. Uh -oh. Well, no, because I, I'll, I'll admit, like I wrote this at the time and now I'm failing to remember why I wrote Lux, no family. What was her, is my notes back and untucked. She got a video. Yes. Um, but I can't remember what I meant by that. I might have to retract that and take it off. I I can't remember. You can't remember why? No, I, I feel like there was something about that she either was disregarded or she just didn't really have um that kind of a connection or something. Mm-hmm. It's not mm. coming to me. Oh, well. Obviously, okay. it was a passionate moment. and It's gone forever. <laughs> and you know the moment you said it, and you're like, right. and now I don't know. Right, yeah. and now I can't substantiate it or pull it back in, probably because it wasn't that important. 
So there's that. All right, so uh, let's move on to Nerve in that case. Um, who you, who? <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, David. Yeah. So I'm giving Nerve to Miss Selena S. Titties. We were just speaking about her and her mirror message. After she left at the start of this most recent episode, her mirror message pretty much was, was um, and I thought I wrote it down, but I didn't. Guess I got what I quote yeah, unquote. Guess I got what I deserved. Yes. Deserved. What I deserved. And then love you hoes. Girl. Okay. Like, so I yes. What is your like, interpretation? Because I think there's two ways to think about this. So I think she like I feel that she was in her feelings about this, you know, the moment, because she didn't feel that she should have gone home. She didn't feel that she should have been um, eliminated. But we had just gotten off this, like, who who should go home and why. Two people said her name, one of them particularly being Lucy. And just previously in the episode, her and Lucy were having this, like, like moment to, like, kind of, you know, making Lucy feel better. And then Lucy kind of, like, for lack of a better phrase, threw her under bus. In her, I think in her feeling, Lucy sort of, like, threw her under the bus when there should have been, she could have said someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and then the love you host could have been a potential, like, just kidding kind of moment with it. But I feel that the main reason for it was to sort of, like, call this out. And we know because of, you know, the 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 Twitters and the um, Bussy Queens and all of them that mm -hmm. there she has she's had some things to say about this her elimination. She's she's had several things to say. <laughs> so it's kind of funny how she's feeling, because I don't think she I think she's Deal a little salty, and it is. It is. I don't know. It feels kind of good. I, I kind of. I can't say day or nay about it. Well, I feel like there's two ways we can interpret her message. Mm -hmm. Her mayor message could be interpreted as deserved means what all the other queens thought she should get mm -hmm. because of how they went down the line. Mm -hmm. And theoretically, you know, a third of them or whatever were like, boots, you got to go. Uh, mm -hmm. Another way to interpret it might be, I thought she was being super bitchy uh, that production felt she deserved Ooh. to leave. Because some of the scuttlebutt has been that Selena shouldn't have won or shouldn't have gone home and that she should have won the lip sync. And Lucy should have gone home. Mm. And I was kind of on that side. Like, honestly, just that lip sync. I was like, it's not the best lip sync in the world, but I felt Selena eked out Lucy by a hair. Mm. And, like, just did a little bit better. And the fact that she went home and I was like, well, guess that was the plan all along and she was going to go home no matter what. And that's just how that is because, yep. you know, we're, we're at that stage now where it's, it's for some of us, our opinion it is that it's just obvious how production is like kind of handling mm. things. Um, still kind of surprised that Marsha went home the episode right before the musical. Um, Cause I think the concern was, yeah. is that because of her being a traveling, like on the road, Broadway performer, she would have probably won. And then that would have really messed up their narrative of the season because then instead of going home on the musical, which would have been like, you know, doubly damning, she would have won. And then she would have had to stick around for another episode. So she would have been around for like two more episodes. And that wasn't the, that wasn't the story they were giving her. Her story was you leave and you leave now before you can show how good you are. Mm. <laughs> like that's mm. one of the conspiracy theories that's out mm. there. So, you know, I'm like, okay, there's that, you know. Yeah. And then my second nerve mm -hmm. is, and this is a good one, Lucy telling the truth. Mm. And this goes to Untucked. 
So if you didn't watch Untucked, sorry about it. You're going to get spoiled. Lucy meant like they have a conversation. Lucy and Lux have this conversation about the her not getting the only the other well the only um, black um, teacher to make over. Mm-hmm. And Lucy tells her the truth, <laughs> and I just loved it. I gave I snaps. It. I was yes. watching that episode and yes. I was like, "Yes, she just told you, honey. She just told uh-huh. you to your face." Like she told, she told Lux, I didn't give it to her because you told me I wasn't, you told me I wasn't unique. You told me, you called me generic, basically for lack of whatever it says. And I was kind of like, right, good. Well, and, and was this was. sabotage? Absolutely. Right. Like, and, and here's the thing is. All season long, the narrative has been that Lucy's not authentic. Lucy's not honest. Lucy doesn't speak her mind. Lucy doesn't, like, she never puts forth the correct face. She's never, like, real. Everything is a facade. Like, she's hiding Uh behind this, like, wall. And I'm like, oh, and here we are. Uh, Baby, that's authentic. She just told you to your face. The reason why you didn't get that teacher is because I don't like you. Like, I don't like how you treated me. And and then on top of it, I was like, and let's talk about the other part of it, because Naomi Smalls and Bianca Del Rio talked about it in the fucking Pit Stop episode. They're like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because it's a makeover challenge. Either you can make over somebody or you can't. End yeah. of story. Right. Like, because it doesn't matter how tall, how short, how old, how young, how big, how small – you could do a makeover. End of story. Either you have the skills or you don't. And guess who did it? Lux does yeah. not have the skill for that. We kind of knew that going into the episode. Yeah. It just it it, it it I loved it because I think it took a bit of nerve again to like actually be that open and blunt about it. Right. In that moment. Mm-hmm. I knew she knew that she was in, you know, the, you know, the bottom, but still like saying it truthfully, literally sitting right next to her or across from her or wherever and saying it to her face. I, well, again, not exactly this, but I did it because I don't like you. (laughs) Fuck off. Like that's right. 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 Like, (laughs) And, right, and that's where I'm at with it, and I'm happy. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, yeah. There you go. Agreed. What about you? Um, I had I had two okay. things that I'm giving nerve for. Okay, uh, Sasha's shredded runway callback. The reason why I'm calling it a callback is: can anybody say denim and diamonds? Yeah. Seriously, I was like, if if Lux is the walking encyclopedia of all of Drag Race history. Sasha is representing and giving us Easter eggs and doing shit like this. The mm-hmm. moment she turned the corner, I was like, okay, will you just give her the fucking check in the crown and be done with it? Like, it is so <laughs> obvious that it is her race and she is winning and production is, like, just fucked. Just royally fucked. No lube. Like, they they just have to, like, figure out how to make it work. Could I just say this? I was genuinely surprised that she didn't win this last episode. There have been a few times this season, I think, that we're surprised that she didn't win. But she can't always win because then why bother? Where's the mm-hmm. drama in that? That's why Ben Lillard sent her cell phone. Speaking of which, a dear friend of mine recently, um, they so they watched the All-Stars All-Winners season and that's the first thing they ever saw. And then I warned them that if they wanted to watch anything else, that that was going to be very disappointing because they really loved that season. I was like, well, that is not like any other season. Just know that. So then they were watching some other stuff and they've been watching season 15. And then I said, well, if you want to watch another good season, watch All Stars 3. I think it is, which is the one that Trixie wins. Yes. And they were like, they were like, well, blah, blah, blah. So I could tell they're watching the episodes because I'm getting little snippets. And then we got to the most infamous thing that has ever happened. Mm -hmm. And with the lipstick and Bendela. And they were like wow and i was like that is why i made you watch that season that was the moment the moment because bendela was like i'm out bye y'all like (laughs) and changed like you know everything changed everything um 
so anyways, yeah, it, it's funny. Um, so yeah, Sasha, you know, having this shredded denim, you know, and rhinestone. It was just, yeah. yeah, it was so pretty. It was so wonderful. I was so happy. Yeah, she 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 definitely. Uh, she's she she knows she knows how to build a package. Right. I will say this: as much as there were seasons where we were kind of criticizing as a general audience the whole like. Um, pageant background Mm -hmm. we have finally evolved in the last two or three seasons i think to where pageant queens are proving they are a force to be reckoned with Mm -hmm. and the reason why is because you can really have a complete 360 presentation you are not just poised you are not just like perfected in terms of your looks but right. you and and how you present yourself, but you can be a goofball. You can be funny. You can be nerdy. Like you can be all these things, mm-hmm. and that's what gets you to the top. Right. Not that you are a former Miss Continental or or a former fill in the blank. Like like yeah, yeah. titles are one thing, but now I think people are starting to understand that like going through that shit is basically like the Drag Olympics. Mm-hmm. And and it molds you into being kind of ready for a lot of stuff. I don't think, from my viewpoint, that the pageant world prepares you for the um, the ad lib for the um, improv aspect of this of this particular contest. Because that's not really, to my knowledge, quite a thing in those areas, mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. and that's usually, I think, where things kind of go sideways for for folks if they haven't been outside of that realm a whole lot. But right. but uh, Sasha's just like, and I think she has a whole army of people who are just like, who have been building her up for two or three seasons to get her to win. Like right. not only have been like, girl, you got to enter, but now they're like, we're, we know how this game gets played, and you're going to win. Like you're just going to slay it, and that's the end of it. Right. Um, I also have a nerve for uh, mm. worthy of a double Shantae. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier. I really feel like Marsha shouldn't have gone home. Right. As much as I wasn't a fan, as much as I was right. like kind of annoyed, I really feel if there was ever an episode, that was the one she shouldn't have gone home. And I've kind of already said my piece earlier about that, about how she had to go home because it was a narrative and musical, yeah. but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I, oh, I saw that, run, that, that, that lip sync for your life and got my life. Like, I loved it. It was amazing. There was stuff that I wasn't expecting. It felt very much like these run, it felt very much like these lip syncs where we've seen double Shantae's. Right. It, right. Felt, it was right there. I know. One of like high quality, high, you know, just fun, both doing killing, slaying it. But then we sent one of them home. I know. I know. I will talk about this later. The wicked tree of it all. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that being said, are you ready to move on to our next sure segment? Thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Tunnies, it's time for our snaps and eye rolls, the uh, hits and misses of these particular episodes, the things that we thought were the highs and the lows. Um, So, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? (laughs) I mean, we've been talking about this this entire episode. Right. Um, Sasha slaying the runways. Mm -hmm. I live for a Sasha Kobe runway. As you kind of mentioned, she knows this shit. She knows how to present a garment. She walks that runway like nobody's business. And she has consistently Mm -hmm. provided really amazing things on the runway. She knows what works. Right. Absolutely. I mean, even this most recent one where she technically didn't walk the runway herself. She was walking with her, her partner, her drag, you know, creation. Right. Uh, Which by the way, Obviously, she knows what the fuck to do because she's done this before. She's a mother. Like, uh. Well, I mean, those two turned the corner and I was like, 
Oh. Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. is kind of in pageant mode. Like, it, like right. it's a competition. And she's like, okay, like, I'm going to drag you up. There's going to be a resemblance. Oh, my God. One of the funniest things out of this latest episode was about the whole pads thing. Uh-huh. Sasha Colby with the ultimate. Well, let's look at the pads. I haven't ever used them or needed to. <laughs> yeah. Cunt. Yeah. Cunt. Yeah. Cunt. Cunt. Yeah. Cunt. Cunt. Yeah. Could not believe she pulled right that. And I was all. like, oh, honey. But I uh-huh. loved the fact that she embraced it. She was like. Let's go with big titties. Let's go with with big hips and asses. Like, and we'll mm-hmm. build that as a part of our family resemblance character. We'll build the outfits to fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally, totally, was- totally turned it out. And her drag daughter was so worthy of being a part of the family mm-hmm. of, of RuPaul's Lots Drag of Race. Old. She was amazing. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is a teacher who has done her homework, who really loves the show and understands what we, what they attempt to do is entertainment. Understood the assignment. Assignment. No pun intended. (laughs) Yes. But yeah, I just, I've just, I've been so much in love with Sasha and kind of like you said, like just crown it. Like let's, let's just, yeah, let's. Let's get through. Let's get through this next episode. And let's get to the next. Let's get to the finale. Let's let's go. Like right. We, like we already know it's gonna happen, and if it doesn't, people gonna be real pissed. Uh, the only way it's not gonna happen is if a teacher pulls it out. That's fair. That's how I feel about it. If Sasha doesn't win. I won't be mad because it's probably going to be Anitra and she's just like, it's going to be a hair's breadth like mm-hmm. of, of, you know, difference in, in terms of that. Anyways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. but, so that's kind of, that's me. And um, Gary might as well. Go into yours. Well, I, <laughs> this is obviously turning into the Sasha love fest. Um, I said, Sasha is mother. And I was referring to the Harlem ball. Mm. So I realized this there was a lot of scuttlebutt online about this. There was some accusations that it's um, appropriation by World of Wonder um, by having them do this like mini little Vogue challenge mm-hmm. ball situation. And I kind of don't want to wade into that because it's not my I don't have a background. I don't understand. Right. Like I, I, I do, but I don't like and I feel like I'm not the one to talk about it. Mm-hmm, However, mm-hmm. I will say this, given the context of what the show is, there is very little room or opportunity to teach history. Mm-hmm. And usually that is the the mirror moments, like when they're putting their faces on, right, right, not right. in front of a mini challenge to talk about the history and the legacy and yeah. houses. And so I, I feel like the the opinions are justified. I mean, they're always justified because they're your opinion. They're your feeling. But at the same time, I was like, I don't know if there was anything malicious about it in terms of disrespect. But again, I'm not the one. That aside, Mm -hmm. Sasha knew what she was doing. And I was like, oh, sweet Jesus. Like, Mm -hmm. I was just like, I was not ready for that. And then on top of it, talk about someone who learns quickly on their feet as an aside, because I just mentioned them, Anitra, baby, she was like, oh, okay, I see you. Like, I mean, it was just, I, I was like, all right, all right. It was amazing. They it are was, the front amazing. runners. They they know. Yeah. It was it was great. I was like, we were, Jim and I, I remember that moment, and Jim and I were talking, like, who do you think won? And I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah. It's between those two. Like, I just, that, the, the. The caliber of their their performances in the mini challenge at that moment where it was like top notch to me, right? It 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 all of it gagged me. All of it was wonderful. Yeah, for them. And I'm like, I don't know who it could have been. Yes, I I I I thought I felt in that moment that Sasha really kind of delivered and Agreed. just set the bar at such a level, and I was like, okay, like. Y'all, y'all are just here for for the fun of it. Like I don't know, like you know, it's just mm-hmm. how that was. All right, yeah. moving on to eye rolls. Oh, 
Okay, David, what are you <laughs> giving eye rolls for? Sorry, I just read what you wrote in the doc. So, oh, so I originally wrote this, and I was going to put this in words, but I felt like I needed a little bit more time. To, whoop, excuse me, mm-hmm. to discuss that. This they did her wrong, and I put actually three very three people. I see that, Marcia, Marcia, Selena, and Lucy, the most recent people that got eliminated Mm. and we've kind of discussed this a little bit through this episode but i'll just kind of bring it up again i do not think marcia should have gone home i think that should have been a double shante Mm -hmm. they killed it in that in that lip sync and again they already had a bunch of shit stacked against them Mm -hmm. they were originally paired with someone but then that pair got you know removed by selena Mm mm-hmm so they ended up having to do the comedy challenge by themselves. Okay. Then they went first in a comedy challenge. Mm-hmm. So you have all of that. Then you have to go first. And she was okay. Like she said, she was okay. Who knows if she actually was okay with it. So she was already had that stacked against her. Right? So here we are. Then it's runway time. And she presents this, you know, Ripper to Shreds was the the theme of the runway. And she presents a concept. Mm -hmm. And given her theatrical background, it made sense to me. I knew immediately what she was going for when she walked out. Mm -hmm. It was the fight for the, like, after either before or after the crowning, I'm assuming Mm -hmm. after considering and the other girls didn't like it and they tore her up right it made sense in my mind and i as she walked down the runway i got it i knew what she was going for then we get to the lip sync and i'm like okay she's killing it they haven't had a double sante at all this season yet Mm -hmm. it made sense it made perfect sense for her to, to, to win, to, for mm-hmm. them to both be there. Then they didn't. Wrong. Moving on to Selena. Again, I feel that we keep these narratives and this production and all this stuff in their sticky little hands and all this shit. And Selena, I think, got the raw end of this stick. She's been down so many times it made sense that she went home only because she had, even though, like you said, she kind of, you know, skate through that runway or not, not the the lip sync. She had also been in the bottom three times before that. It's very rare that a queen makes it to four and, and, and continues. Mm -hmm. So she had a lot of odds stacked against her. However, that could have been a really interesting narrative. The queen that has been fighting all her life Mm -hmm. keeps on fighting and makes it again. Cause realistically to me, there wasn't a reason for her to be in the bottom. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to be that bitch, but that there, there, there was a certain facet to me that felt that in the wig loose in the challenge, they said everyone did really well. Mm-hmm. They said everyone was amazing. They said everything was great. And then she presents this runway, which totally understood the assignment of these big ass gloves that was fun and funny. But for some reason, we don't feel that it was enough. Like we make these weird ass comments about like maybe that like I didn't see the glove. Like Ross, fuck you. Um, I didn't see the gloves because I was looking at the face. How the fuck were you looking at the face when he has these giant ass hands? I'm sorry. I don't know who is looking at, I didn't know it was a face until I, until she kind of stopped and I noticed it, but that was at the end. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you look at all of that and see, not see what this was? Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then Lucy, here we are. I think Lucy has been getting this narrative of, we you know, mentioned it before, and I don't 
dislike Lucy. But I think in this episode in particular, and in the episode before, there was this strange, like, ganging up on her. Mm. Not allowing her to have an actual opinion or thought about something. And don't get me wrong. I There are certain things that have been said, which, you know, she said it, blame it on the edit, whatever you want to solve, but she did say it. That I kind of feel okay, Lucy, like, mm, maybe not so much. Maybe you don't see what's really going on. But on that same token, I don't not see it, if that makes sense. It just feels very weird. Mm -hmm. And do I think the queen should have been eliminated at this point and we have the top, you know, four that we have? Yes. I think no matter what, these queens wouldn't have made it to top four. I think their arrangement in leaving was off. Hmm. And the only one that only makes sense, unfortunately, is Selena. Only because something. But her elimination doesn't make sense. Correct. Yeah. Um, did you watch, have you been watching uh, the YouTube series with Michelle Visage, What You Packing? I have not. Okay. The reason why I ask is the most recent one is with Lucy, because she's the most recent queen to exit. Mm -hmm. Sashay. Um, very interesting. Hmm. Because I don't necessarily think that what is it? sorry. I got... What Ooh. Skype, shut up. <laughs> what the, I don't know what that was about. I just kept getting these random like pop-ups about trying to help. I'm like, I don't want your help. I didn't ask for your help. Stop it. Nope. How can I help you today? You can't. And I didn't ask you to. Anyways. Sorry, everybody. Um, I feel after watching it that Lucy... Lucy was authentic. Mm. And I mean all season long. Mm. I think a lot of people felt like Lucy wasn't being real, wasn't being in the moment or whatever. But watching her talk to, to, to Michelle, like a part of me was like, at first I was like, wow, you really are like, you are so in the zone, like about how you present yourself. And then all of a sudden I had an epiphany and I was like, oh my God. She doesn't like this is her. This is like Alyssa Edwards. This is like Valentina. Like mm. they're not putting on. This is literally who they are. Mm. End of story. Like and and everyone has been presuming that like Lucy isn't being authentic. Lucy isn't opening up or whatever. And I'm like, I think she just really does kind of have a different view of the world and it comes across like she's in a bubble. Mm. And I don't know if she's really in a bubble or not. Because that infers in that in that analogy in that, you know, concept that that like the bubble can pop and there will be a moment where the wor the real world comes in and I'm like I I don't know if that is the case. I think they just walk differently, talk differently, and see the world differently, and that's kind of the end of it. Yeah. So the yeah, yeah. like that. So the, I just found that pit stop really interesting. Like listening to her talk and Michelle ask questions because even Michelle was kind of fascinated with like some things and and asking some questions. Um, mm. it, this isn't meant to be spoilery because uh, it really isn't. But Lucy has been working in construction for her entire drag career, like. At the time she started in that actual work field outside of drag, she also did drag and has been highly supported the entire time by her co-workers, like by her family. And she is – she said she let them know that this is the last season she will be working with them and that she's going to pursue, like, doing nothing but drag. And she may very well move. Mm -hmm. And I – she didn't say where, but I kind of got the impression that she might move to L.A., 
I I just really found that I don't know so fascinating because I was like, yeah, wow, like you really, you really do kind of strike me as a person. Like the closest parallel maybe I can make is like Pandora Box, like mm. somebody who lived in an area where they had become locally very well known. And then went off to Hollywood, like, and did a thing and decided that's how they wanted to, to move and pursue things. I'm not saying it's going to be the same, like, it's a parallel path, like, it's going to be the same outcomes. I'm just saying, like, I just find that very interesting, like, to be from a small town kind of area, um, mm -hmm. small state, no pun, uh, you know, and, and how you kind of, like, you, you ascend, you come to a certain thing, and then, like, you, that's just kind of what you have done that's what you've achieved and if you want to do more you have to go elsewhere you have to do other things that being said um i feel like lux is much more representing the potential of living in a bubble mm. and just doesn't get it right and everyone's kind of waiting for that bubble to pop um so uh in our chat on telegram I put a quick poll together to ask um, just this weekend, now that we know that there's only a top four and that they are going old school and that there's going to be a top three. Right. Because um, they're going to do the cla the old classic of you're going to lip sync to a RuPaul song and you're going to do the music video and one of you isn't going to make the cut. Um, so I said, it appears RuPaul's Drag Race Season 15 is going to have a top three finale. Whom do we think is not going to make the cut? Uh, and so 80% uh, of the vote all agreed that uh, it's Lux who isn't going to make it. I find that intriguing because there's a part of me that's like, are we all being bitter Bettys and we just don't like her and we want her to get the boot? <laughs> I don't know. But I do think, but mm, how do I put this? If I look at the queens that are currently here, that mm -hmm. are left, mm -hmm. and what we're doing next, I feel like the two that have the potential to falter mm -hmm. are Mistress and Mother. I agree. They have the potential to falter. I think Sasha will kill it because she has done all of this shit before. This isn't anything new since we're doing basically a, a video kind of situation, kind of like what they've done so many years in the past. Mm -hmm. Anitra will probably have some issues with choreography, but if it's not just choreography, she's fine. Right. Um, and even then... She got choreography, and she she it was she falters at first, but she gets it. Right. We know Mistress doesn't do choreography well. She can't eventually, but she has the issues with that. And we know that Lux can pick things up quickly, but there's more to it than just that. And right. I keep I I'm trying to say that only because there's more to this challenge, I think, than just like singing, dancing, and doing stuff. You kind of have to do a lot more. You have to act more right and i don't think she's got the acting chops well and i think perhaps maybe part of the reason that we feel this way in terms of our voting is i think we would like to see her overbearing confidence not get her to the end that's a very fair point because i think it grates on us and it and it and it annoys mm -hmm. the shit out of us and it pisses us off Mm -hmm. So we would like to feel justified personally in being like, no, girl, <laughs> you got to go. Like, like we're yeah. done. Like RuPaul likes you. You've been a play toy, but you got to go. Like you're, you're not worthy, yeah. Yeah. Um, even though you that think you're sense. worthy. <laughs> so I, I don't. Guess, uh, yeah, I don't I know. Don't, I don't need this. I'll put it like this. And I'm just going to be blunt and, and controversial get brave, as, as Chrissy says. You're not going to win. Point blank, period. Like, I, 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 <laughs> I wish I had the Jasmine Masters and I, oop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love not I, that there's I, anything I, wrong with what you just said. Yeah. 
it's it's just how I feel about it. I don't of the four that are left. Mm-hmm. To me, you have the least likeliest opportunity to win. Right. You are. Wow, this is harsh. I'm gonna be super harsh. You. Again, this confidence grading is grading. There's this, again, weird mentality like that you think you're this amazing person, and I don't think you are as amazing as you think you are. So delusion. Um, and then I don't think this is what they want the the, the legacy to represent. Mm. And that's me being probably a little bit harsher than I want to be. I Actually, wonder I, I, I wonder if there's some scuttlebutt between production and Rue. Because I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if Rue's like, but she is the legacy. And everybody around Rue is like, no, she's not. Mm. Like, just because you like her doesn't mean she's great. <laughs> I'm just saying and this leads into my eye rolls. <laughs> um, okay. So the first thing I said in terms of eye rolls is kissing ass is not gamesmanship. Mm. Mm. So when she came down the runway in that wee wee po, like mm-hmm. replica, not quite a hundred percent. Yeah. I was pissed. Ooh. I was like, who the fuck do you think you are? It is so obvious, like, that you are kissing ass. Like, my question is, how far did your tongue go up that starfish? Like, that is ridiculous. I was like, there is nothing honorable about that. I don't care what your intention was. I'm receiving it as the biggest pile of dog shit I've ever seen on the runway in terms of, like, the attempt of what you're expecting to do. You could say that you're calling it up and that you're honoring it. I don't see it as honoring it. I see it as kissing ass. End of story. Because you have been strategic the entire season, and you cannot tell me that you thought to yourself that if I replicate this original RuPaul look, that it won't score me points. That's gamesmanship. Like, that's kissing ass. That is that is that is all of that. And even though I said kissing ass is a gamesmanship, it really is, I guess. And it just pisses me off. I'm like, no, that is, that is not being authentic. That is not yeah. – that is just, like, but, attempting and, to get ahead. And I will say this in the nicest way. Nope. I don't need to be nice. Fuck you. Um, you probably weren't even born when she was doing this shit. So true. So true. You probably don't know anything about what this meant. You have no idea what this was about. You happily don't even realize what you're rep- trying to represent in this moment. So, and I, and maybe you do, maybe you have taken the the, the history lessons of of what have you, of drag and RuPaul and all that stuff. Maybe you have gotten some knowledge. It doesn't appear to be so, considering you don't seem to have any drag family. So, I don't know where you got your history lesson from, other well, than the. Right, right. I was going to say, to watch videos, to watch biopic, like, things that people have put together to read RuPaul's books. Yeah. Like, that's the only way I know. And right. maybe that's you doing the research on the stuff. But I – you got what you wanted because RuPaul had a reaction and mm-hmm. she, 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 she felt it. But I, I was not a fan. Because it wasn't accurate. Agreed. Yeah. And no, agree. on top of that, it didn't meet the requirements. So let me let me let me explain. <laughs> Rip her to shreds. Mm-hmm. That was the quote unquote prompt. It is different than shredded. Rips and tears and pulls and such like that, they they're they are inconsistent. They're different links, they're different fabric, they're frayed, all of these things in fabric. I'm just thinking like this, and this is what I'm talking about. All of that looked perfect. 
spot on. Like it looked like you look at the, and again, I'll probably have to look at it again. Maybe I'm wrong, but it felt like it almost felt like everything was him at the end. Everything mm-hmm. was, was like done to a perfection, perfect team right. or it. And that's where I felt like it was wrong. If you had done something a little better, maybe it could have worked. But to me, it felt like, like you said, it felt like kissing ass. It felt like you were like, oh, I know RuPaul stuff, or I remember seeing a picture of this in her book, or oh, I saw that video of her back way back then before all of this kind of went down. This fits perfectly. Let me get someone to make this outfit for me. Right. I realize what made me mad about it. I had to look up the definition. It's pandering. Mm. It is exactly giving to RuPaul what she wants, which is this nostalgic like callback moment to say to RuPaul, I see you and the, the, the path that you paved for us. Mm-hmm. That's a good word, Miss. You don't need you don't need to do that. And if you're going to do it, you should have earned the right to do it. And I don't think you've earned the right to do it. So Mm. fuck off with that. Um, My second thing that I'm giving eye rolls to is I'm just going to say this and then I'll explain it. That lip sync was a mess, mama. And I am talking about the most recent lip sync. Hated it. And I don't think that. Luck should have won. Because that's who I'm saying was a mess. Flailing your body about on a dance, or on a floor, on a stage is not, in my opinion, good enough. It was erratic. It was kind of like looking desperate. And so I was like, this is so weird because this is becoming the opposite of, um, I'm going to need your help, Damon. Uh, Latrice and um, um, Ken- Kenya Ken- Michaels. When Kenya Michaels is like spinning around and you know and doing all this shit on the stage, and Latrice is like, whatever, puppy dog. Like you know, it just stands there and emotes. I feel yeah. like this was a, a weird like alternate universe reverse of that, mm-hmm. where like. Lux is busy, you know, flailing themselves all over the stage, pulling everything out, quote unquote, and looking bad, in my opinion. And Lucy is being more reserved. So because she's not because she's not going to that level. And yet Lucy's the one that has to go home. And I'm like, you should have sent them both home. So so (laughs) I'm just saying. No, 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 no. We're going to talk about it. It was a mess. You brought this up. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Let's go. Um, fuck this shit. Sorry. This. I watched that lip sync and I don't know what the hell was going on in Ireland's minds. This mm-hmm. did not feel like a lip sync of the queens that they claim to be. Either one, real to me. This felt like. Like Lux, I I there's something you should know better. First of all, you did a lot of that. Like I'm gonna be up front and I'm gonna cut in front of Lucy and mm. do all these things and make all this shit and I'm fla- like you said flailing and doing. You know, it felt very off to me. That didn't feel like someone who knows their drag race history would know better than to not do that. Well, and some of those know- some of those choices were disrespectful of the other performer. Right. Absolutely. Like we just saw this these these teachers, and you know I'm gonna put this in kind of a perspective. We just saw these teachers who have never done drag before mm-hmm. come out here and do this lip sync, and were genuinely like kind and understanding. Like there was a moment, and I love it because I thought it was hilarious, where um, oh her name Asia Azul. So she's doing like this spin moment with her cape because she's loving her cape because she is living in that cape. And she then spins into Madam Thang, Thang, uh, Thang, and she's like, oh, shit. Like, I'm like, yeah, because you were in your moment, and you were having your moment, and then you realize reality sets in, and there's another person on this stage. Mm -hmm. And instead of, like, doing something to kind of cut it off and and be like, fuck you, bitch, like, I'm here to win this thing, because they weren't really winning anything, you were like, oh, excuse me, like, oh, my, you know, my apologies. 
And then we go into this lip sync where they, again, looked like they were just flailing. And I get it. This is, you're that close to the end. You fall into the bottom somehow. And here you are trying this desperate attempt to win, to make it to the to the next step, which mm-hmm. is the final four. <sighs> Lucy was... The Lucy, I saw, okay, I'll put it like this. The Lucy I saw doing this lip sync on the runway or in Untucked was very different than the Lucy I saw on stage. Mm. And I think a lot of it had to do with she was seeing what Lux was doing or attempt, well, like Lux was doing, and she was trying desperately to build up to that or put something in to kind of get the attention on her. I love you, baby. That, that somersault or that cartwheel, just, just stop. Don't, don't ever do that again. You can't do it. Like, and, and I can see why you have this very built, you know, physical body and then your waist is cinched and you are like, you know, body for the days, your body, it's not, I don't think, capable of doing the cartwheel. It's just not. Right, right. And because of the way you have padded your body, you're just not going to do it. And so don't, don't, I get why you did it, because you were trying to match this, like, frantic um, energy moments and trying to get some attention on you. But you didn't need to, Lucy. Right. Let her look the fool, because she did. Like like you said, I agree with that. Lux, I just don't understand what was going on with her. I don't understand where you thought this, you thought this was going to go well. Again, knowing your history, you, you should know better than to like do all this cutting in front of, of people and playing in front of them. Like we've, we've, we've evolved from that. That season like two, three. This is 15. We, we have gone past this, like, I'm going to jump in front of you mm-hmm. to, like, pull the focus to me. No, we, we have moved beyond that. Right. So. Yeah. And I and I feel like my concern is that there will be no there will be no uh, retribution for that. Like, there will be no consequence for that. Like, she right. just gets to behave that way and that will be acceptable. That will be OK. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but it's not okay. No. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I hadn't thought about the corseting thing, but that makes so much sense why why Lucy Leduca has difficulty with, with some of the extra stuff. But then mm-hmm. I think about it, and I'm like, she's a goddamn construction worker covered in tattoos. She's not a dancer. Yeah. She's not Cameron Michaels. She's not Brooklyn Heights. Do you know what I mean? Like she's she's just not. She is a beautiful woman mm-hmm. who is mostly a. And I'm trying to make a, a analogy parallels, and I realize we really shouldn't do this, but she's mostly a Varla Jean Merman. Mm-hmm. Like she's a a funny queen. Like, of a certain aesthetic, of a certain style, and a certain type. Gymnastics is not it. <laughs> like, yeah. and so I don't expect that from her. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I thought, th- I thought that lip sync was a mess, Mama. And I really felt like they both should have gone home. And you know what's my biggest issue with this overall? We have been playing this Lux Lucy bullshit for a while in this season. This, like antagonism to them and we gave them a moment to potentially redeem themselves with the comedy challenge which was just the first episode of our you know review here and they both won they had this wonderful we had this wonderful opportunity to see them both like we we rose to the challenge and we did something really great but immediately after that it has been nothing but like Downing, like downing on Lucy or sucking Lucy, like, you know, fuck Lucy kind of things. And right. I'm, I'm not having it considering 
you both won a challenge. And no offense, Lux, Lucy carried you in that challenge. Mm-hmm. You were able to provide the zingers, which I think really worked, but you worked off of Lucy. You played with Lucy in those comedy moments, and that's what got you both to win. Right. Yeah, so... <laughs> Here anyways. we are. No, I know, and that's why I, I, I'm still, you know, feeling like if they don't save somebody to go on for a top four, mm-hmm. which is still quite possible, um, then I feel like it's going to be a top three. And person, it's just my personal, it's I'm having a moment and it's my feelings and I do not want her to go on. I want her to get the boot. I want her to have her mm-hmm. potential dose of reality because a part of me still thinks that she won't get it. Mm. And and the reason why I say that is like what as strange as it is, in some ways I feel like Lucy and Lux are in the same pod, in the same row of the garden as peas, like that they just have this concept of themselves and they just don't get it. Yeah. I don't know. Um Yeah. So yeah. It, it will it will be interesting. So as we wrap up um and get ready to move into closing, I in theory there are three more episodes. It's so interesting. Normally by this time of year, like there's a lot of speculation and like there's like I I think there's a lot of stuff about like what are the dates and how is this whole thing playing out? And I don't Mm -hmm. feel like any of that is happening this year. I'm not seeing it. I haven't seen it yet. And isn't that strange, Damien? Like I always feel like is that is that a sign of the times that people think either the show is predictable or they don't care Mm. and that they're just not invested because – we just keep getting shoved so much stuff at us that we're like, oh, that's right. Another queen is going to win. And then you're going to announce another season. And, like, that's going to take away from this queen. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, the machine just keeps rolling, you know, mm-hmm. the, the over everybody. Turning, yeah. Uh, because, so in theory, with today being the 26th of March, uh, we have three more episodes. We have the top four down to top three episode. Uh, I forget what it's called. I've seen the title. Um, so here's here's the thing. So I'm, I'm just because I, I had to pull it up. Mm-hmm. It looks as though the finale, if this is accurate, is going to be on Saturday, April 1st at the theater at Ace Hotel Los Angeles. Okay, so this Friday, this coming Friday the 31st is going to be the top four to top three. Mm -hmm. The very next day, they're going to record the finale and or the reunited, Mm -hmm. which makes sense. Are they recording the the, the reunion on the 31st? Right, right, right. So then on Sunday, or sorry, (laughs) I'm thinking of our schedule. So then April 7th is the reunited airing. April 14th is the finale. Yeah. So yeah, we're down. We're down to three more episodes. It'll be a sixteen episode arc, uh, four months basically. But it, it's like it, it's a, almost like it's a month ahead of time because isn't it normally we're we're in May when all this shit wraps up? Possibly. And it used to be that they filmed everything right around DragCon or Mother's Day. And now that's not happening at all. And I, if I recall correctly, DragCon LA has moved down to two days this year. That's the big new thing is instead of it being three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think it's just Saturday and Sunday, which my understanding is a lot of people who have participated are very happy about this. And they're like, because so, three days is a lot. Two days is better. <laughs> so last season started January 7th and ended April 22nd. Season 13. Thank you, Wikipedia, because this helped me so much. <laughs> Started January 1st, ended April 23rd. So it has been ending about April. Um, huh, okay. Well, season 12, they didn't start until February. Okay. And then it went into May. Okay. And I'm going to go to 11. So apparently I'm living in a time warp and it's three years ago. Not, yeah. Well, mate. Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now going backwards. Um, season 11 started in February and ended in May, May, May 30th. So what it's looking like is 
since season 13, 13 yeah. they've started earlier in January and ended in April. Earlier, right. That's fair. Hey, I'm all about it. You know, the two of us, we've been doing this for quite a number of seasons now, and we're like shorter seasons. Thank you very much. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, when they announced 16 Queens, I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> the season's going to go on forever. <laughs> but they really have kind of shook it up, like like we've talked about. No no double Shantae's, no bringing anybody back, like mm-hmm. these things that they've done before. So they've just, like, been boom, 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 you know? Yeah. Um, it's been very interesting, and I appreciate. I think I agree with you. I appreciate that the fact that they're just like, let's just keep it going, right? Keep it pushing, um, and and so they have done that. So yeah, we're down to the top four. Uh, we've kind of peppered throughout this episode our feelings about that, and that you know we think that there's two queens who potentially are the most likely not to make it through and, the music video challenge. And it's funny. Give me one second. Um, oh nope, that's not there. Shit. Anyway, sorry, I, I had just the other day opened up, or today opened up like Google, and one of the first articles was um, this the ending, the, the finale needs to be a double win. It was an article, I forget who wrote it, but someone was writing an article about that the ending should be a double win. Well, it won't be the first time. I mean, it would be the first time that it's actually a double win oh <laughs> what the fuck you doing here <laughs> yeah for those of you that haven't been around you need to go back to the all-stars uh series to understand what we're referring to because that was just anyways that was a thing that happened confusing as it was what it did but yeah i mean to be fair i will say this season of all the most recent seasons i feel like production has taken the note Fix it, bitch! <laughs> and they've honestly been attempting to craft a better season the only real big misstep i think they made after they already recorded everything was to give in to MTV and to do 60 minute episodes for the first like eight or nine or 10 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then go back to the nineties because the moment we went back to a 90 minute episode, quote unquote, we were like, Oh look, there's Rue talking to them, you know, from the screen. You know what I mean? There's a mini challenge. Like, you know, it, it felt like the fuller length of things and it kind of fleshed some stuff out. So I really do believe that there is a cutting room floor version edited for nineties. And supposedly it's going to be viewable internationally. There was a rumor on a podcast I was listening to that said that it was being released, I think on the international Netflix. Don't everybody hold me to this, but I found that very interesting because there's a part of me that's like, I might almost be willing to go back and watch the first like half of the season again just to see the 15 20 minutes that got cut every single episode Mm. just because i'd be curious to see what they what they put back in and how much of that might reveal more about the queens and and stuff but yeah so anyways that's a whole thing but uh yeah so we're down to the last couple episodes uh so unless things change we have three more episodes to come and damon and i will be back and we'll be talking about how all that played out uh, and how we got to the winner or potentially winners question mark. Um, you know, so that being said, there's plenty of ways for you to get in touch with us and tell us your thoughts. Cause it boy, uh, baby, it was a little spicy. This one, I will admit, uh, <laughs> or I, uh, I can't speak Spanish. I shouldn't do that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm a white man who should know better. Anyways, uh, so you can visit our uh, blog website, comesoutloud.com. You can send us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. You can uh, leave us a voicemail message. Uh, let us know your thoughts. We would be happy to play it. Or at least just listen to it if you don't want to play it, and then we can talk about it. Uh, and you would call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Um, you can pretty much find us anywhere online on social media. Just type in Cubs Out Loud as one word. Uh, if you want to um, join our Telegram chat... Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened to our invite and our other stuff, but if you go and use the Telegram platform and you cite, 
type in col drag race i think you should be able to find us um if not we may have to we may have to start a new group i don't know we'll see uh if you want to know what's happening when we're going to be live with the regular series of not drag race you can go to uh, bit.ly backslash calendar dash col uh that tells you when we're going to be doing live shows that uh, stream straight to youtube um as we record them we'll be doing one here in just minutes <laughs> from now after we wrap this uh if you would like to support Cubs out loud there's several ways to do that and first of which uh you can buy some merch don't you need more things in your life? Isn't the American dream? Buy more crap. You go to Zazzle.com <laughs> slash Cubs Out Loud and get a couple of things. As David is demonstrating, we have a lovely uh, coffee mugs and uh, uh, other accoutrements with either the COL or the COL Drag Race logo on it. Yes, that's it, bitch. Wipe your mouth. Uh, <laughs> not that you have to be told. So, uh, but we have various items on there. We have the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo, our bear uh, with the crown. We also <laughs> have um, the uh, Consent is by Foreplay, a series of shirts with a whole bunch of different designs. Um, and the one that Damon happens to be wearing, for those of you that can't see, is uh, the Drag Pride color. Uh, so it's white, blue. Uh, and pink with a lovely crown. Um, so that's something that you could get there on a, as a design on apparel or other items as well. Uh, if you would like to, you can become a patron. You can go to patreon.com slash hubs out loud for a dollar or more a month. Uh, help us keep the lights on as the saying goes. Uh, we're about to pay for the server uh, and domain history coming up in another month. Uh, I think it's either end of April or the beginning of May. Um, and so your money goes towards that. And our patrons are actually going to be getting uh, some rewards here in the next month. And I'm kind of excited about that. We'll talk about that in uh, another thing, possibly a Patreon exclusive uh thing and then if you would like to uh just send us some money because you appreciate what we do you can go to paypal.me slash comes out loud and you can just give us a tip just a cash tip make a one-time donation however much you want we would greatly appreciate it uh and if you want to help uh promote see well you can go to apple Podcasts, google play spotify other places and find us apparently uh jeff sent a message about like they're doing channels now on apple podcast or something like that and so we might have to make some new artwork more on that later um damon if people want to get in touch with you where would they find you online if you wish to get in touch with me you can find me at theater cub 79 that's t-h-e-a-t-r-e-c-u-b-7-9 our most related sites are on facebook you can find me as pup underscore umbra on twitter the twitter is definitely not safe for work mm -hmm. um but that's not a bad thing. If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gamer73. I did create a Twitter explicitly for all things drag. Uh, and I've been like carefully crafting and curating and blocking a lot of other stuff in the other areas. So it's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3-D-R-A-G. Um, so I can kind of keep up on the scuttle, but over there when it comes to drag race things. But outside of that, uh, yeah, we're down to the final four. And these are typically uh, mostly the queens who have won the most, done, the, gotten the most coins so far. So I'll be very curious to see how it plays out. But with mm -hmm. that being said, uh, we will return in a couple of weeks with our final thoughts. Bye. Bye. <laughs>